thank you for the song, for the special. Now, uh, I want you to prepare your hearts unto the Lord as we worship Him through listening to God's Word. We you know uh, preaching and hearing God's Word uh, is very important, especially uh, in our life as a Christian because uh, this is where our souls are being fed and this is one thing another thing to help us grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and our topic is about the forgiveness of God is our comfort of course I know now after knowing not just only hearing after seeing or after reading from the pages of the Word of God, uh, how the Lord has or had forgiven not only the Israel, but even those people in our time, and even during the New Testament time, and even in our time today, how the Lord had forgiven us. And, and because of that forgiveness, that just we have felt, but we experienced, based on the path which is the Word of God, <coughs> it gives us a real and comfort uh, in our life. Because I believe that the only one who can truly give us comfort is God. Amen. Amen. The only one. And the reason why we are not comforted sometimes in our trials is because we often seek comfort from other sources than God Himself. Remember that God comforts us through revealing to us who really is. Kung sino siya talaga. From the book of Isaiah chapter 40, we could find that God desires to comfort His people. Actually, in, 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 in the first chapter 39, from the book of chap, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah's message is anything but comforting. Anything but comforting. It is a message of judgment against nation, kingdoms, cities, and people. However, in chapter 40, uh, we have a change in the focus of prophecy or of the prophecy. Now it is to comfort God's people after their trials and testing. Imagine no? they are being comforted after those uh, trials and testings that they had both experienced in their life. And we now note that the comfort of God's forgiveness based in three things. Number one, based upon our relationship to God Himself. Number two, based upon reality and response toward us. And number three, based upon uh, realization and reasons. Now, Inside chapter 40, verse 1, it said, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. Say it, your God. Now, we could find here that it is the Lord's desire to comfort His people. Now, in the Old Testament, we know that God's people, the chosen people, were no other than the nation Israel. God has no other desire uh, for the cry uh, of the nation Israel but to comfort them especially at the time of their at the time of their needs now we know also that God's desire for us especially when we suffer to be comforted it is he that commands that comfort be given and he gives the command twice for emphasis. Sabi niya, comfort ye, comfort ye. And he also says, my people. Amen? 
course, I, I mentioned a while ago that the nation Israel is the chosen people of God. And we know for sure, someone has said that the Christians are spiritual Israel because we also are being chosen by God. We are chosen by God unto salvation. We know that at the time we, we, we trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, and we became a child of God by faith upon trusting the Lord Jesus Christ, the statement of the Word of God based on the decision we made was we're chosen. And because we're chosen as a child of God, we are considered as His people. The Bible says in, in John chapter 1, verse 12, But as many as receive Him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God. Amen? So, meaning to say, when we trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, we become his own. That's why the songs that we sing this morning is more, more on, uh, uh, I, the, But I know whom I have believed, and I have persuaded that he is able, he is able to save the sinners from their standing. He is able to give lives to those who are dead because of trespasses and sins. To those people who trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, they became God's very own. Amen? They became God's uh, beloved people. And from here we could find that the nation Israel from Egypt, which is the type of the world, they were chosen by God because they were chosen by God and allowed God to be out of the world and bring them to the place He promised, which is the promised land. Now notice, He calls them my people. There is no comfort for those who are not His. Like the song we sing, Now I belong to Jesus. Amen. We do not belong to any other else. Yes? Uh, sabi natin, uh, before we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, because of our standing, because of our sinfulness, because men sinned and violated God's will in their life, and men chose to, to be at the side of the enemy, ang sabi ng Bible, ye and your father, the devil. That is our former standing before we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. But we are no longer under them because we are already possessed by the Lord Jesus Christ. We belong to Jesus. And uh, we could say also like the prayer that he taught, he teaches to the people when thou prayest, pray it like this. Our Father. We are, uh, we are sure of our relationship with God, not like others. We're, 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 we're calling them father, but they are not sure if they are related or not. Actually, if you ask them where God lives, we know that God lives at the, the, the third uh, uh, God lives at the, uh, at the third heaven, which is the abode of God. We know that He lives there. And if you are related to, to, to the Lord Jesus Christ, you must 100% sure without a shadow of doubt that whatever happens to you that you are heaven bound people amen you are 100% sure because you know you are a child of God if you are uh, uh, of course if you have a parent and you know where you live if someone will ask you where do you live you know 100% uh, to respond where do you live the same thing applies to the child of God now listen, tandaan po natin mga kapatid, he, uh, now I belong to Jesus. He commits himself to us with the praise, say it, your God. Notice, let's go back to, our, <coughs> to verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Are we not comforted that the nation are Israel are being told to be comforted? to be comported, and God said He owns them, my people. You see, 
And to them that receive, sorry, not my Bible, they became. He owns us. If Jesus Christ is God's Son, uh, sabi na natin, by true nature, we are God's children by adoption. And it is true. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So He commits Himself to us with the praise, Say it, your God. Who says it? The Bible says, the response from the very word of God, Say it, your God. It is not me who told you that he, you are God's people, but based on what the Bible says, that say it the Lord, <coughs> or say it God. Now here, he commits himself to us with the praise, say it to God. Here we see the basis for God's comfort in our relationship to him and his to us. Christian Sometimes people want a sign or some proof, but many who saw his mighty works never knew his comfort. So it is based upon our relationship to God. If we are related to God, we know that we have the comfort from Him. And not only it is the Lord's desire to comfort His people, but it is also His design to use his servant to bring this comfort. Amen? That's why I am shouting not based on my own wisdom. I'm shouting this message not based on my own knowledge, but based on the path which is the very word of God. And the very word of God will tell us, it says, Comport ye, comport ye, my people, say it your God. You see, God has chosen to use believers to offer His comfort to one another. The Bible says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, if you have your Bible, please turn with me in the book, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. I'm sorry. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Verse 4. Who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them, which are in any trouble, by comfort, comfort, wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Oh, we're talking about tribulation, right? When we are talking about tribulation, we know that we're talking about hardship. Because in in times, there are times in our life that we are in this, maybe not in this literal tribulation, because I know there would be a literal tribulation that would happen in this world soon. But that brethren, I am talking a tribulation which probably uh, is hard. To, to, it, no one wants to experience this kind of uh, thing in their lives. And probably uh, this tribulation is more than uh, oppression. It is more than discouragement. But Christian, the God of comfort will comfort us. Maybe we, we can claim that uh, the Lord will help me in times of this situation. Amen. And if you if you've heard if you've read, uh, uh, the, the the God of comfort will comfort you. Then we have to be prepared. That's why it is based upon our relationship to God. I know that there will come a time in my life that as I journey in this life, maybe I would experience this kind of thing in my life, but I am ready because I know my God or the God of comfort is ready to comfort me in times that I am facing those kind of things. It might be problems, it might be difficulties, it might be or whatever. So listen, all of, all of the suffering, all the trials, everything we go through is for a purpose. Amen? It is for a purpose. 
Remember this morning in, in, in our lesson about the life of Abraham in our Sunday school, we know that uh, uh, Abraham was sure that, uh, and he is very strong, and he was, uh, he is confirmed that although at the time that they were uh, uh, at the Mount Moriah and never seen any offering to be offered as a sacrifice, he still believed that the Lord will provide. And he believed he was comforted on the promises of God, the, the, the covenant that he made to him, na talagang in his seed, he will become prosperous. And we know it happens until such time that he need to put into action the testing in his, the primary testing in his life that he need to slay his own son. And at the act of acting, not only ito, not only acting ito, it is a reality of doing what the Lord wants him to do. And yet here comes now God. Through the angel, by sending the angel of the Lord, stop! Don't hurt your son. Look at the other side. And he saw the ram caught in a ticket and took that ram and offered a sacrifice for their stead. Christian, all that we might be comforted and that we might comfort others also. And every time I read the life and the story of Abraham, I am comforted of his consistent faith. I am confident that he was comforted by the Lord when the Lord on time, not late, on time, that the provision has been given. And the Bible says that he passed the test. Amen? Christian, the forgiveness of God is our comfort. And it is based upon our relationship to God Himself. And the number two, it is based upon reality and response towards us. In verse 2, we could find, Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. Oh, meaning to say warfare, talagang, uh, they struggled. They have, they have a fight. But notice here, he understands our need. Maybe when you are in struggles, and sometimes instead of going to God, where, we, where do we go? We go to somewhere else. We go to wrong people. And look for an advice instead of uh, looking up to God and ask wisdom. Since you are related to Him, no matter how far is the distance of heaven to earth, if you are a child of God, God's heaven, in just a very a whispering voice praying to Him, it reaches the heaven, and God hears our prayer. Amen? Brethren, He understands our need. He speak comfortably to Jerusalem. And cry unto whom? And cry unto Father. Meaning to say, isumbong mo sa Panginoon. Sabihin mo sa Panginoon kung ano ang nasa puso mo. Amen? Tell it to Jesus like the song that we always sang every time we have a prayer meeting. And Christian, have you ever been speaking to someone, perhaps sharing some real need, and have them, well, then change the subject. There are times in the back. Maybe they 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 won't they don't want to help you. And they keep on ignoring uh, what what do you want to tell or what do you want to say? And it's hard. Sometimes people like that. Ignoring and changing the topics, changing the, the road of your conversation, but in this the notice here it is a comfort to know that God will never lose interest in us. Amen? So Christian, it is based upon the reality and response towards us. 
We should be very uh, positive uh, of our relationship to God. Because that relationship will give you more comfort as you approach God in whatever conversation you would like to make unto God. You see, in respect to whatever needs we have, mga kapatid, it is a comfort to know that God will never lose interest in us. Remember that He listens and understands our needs. Amen? And sometimes we murmur against God. And if you believe that we have a God of comfort, just wait. Because even Abraham, he patiently waited for the time. Imagine, it took him a hundred years for God to fulfill his covenant promise that Sarah will give birth to a son, Isaac. And then after 20 years passed, now God is now, was now again testing him to offer, wala to offer to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. Then how, uh, what will happen to the promise of being a great nation if, if Isaac will be killed? And yet, despite of that, very early in the morning, he wake up, and then travel three, three, day, three days and three nights. And then after that, they were already at the foot of the mountain with, with, with servants telling them, stay here, we will come back. Have you noticed the fate of this man? When they were already at the top of the mountain, the Mount Moriah, now Isaac was now... Uh, talking to him and saying, everything is ready, but where is the offering? Because we know that there is a battle in the mind and in the heart of Abraham, but those battles never bothered him. He still believed in God that the Lord will provide. That's why they call that mountain, uh, that mountain uh, uh, Mount Moriah, they call it Jehovah Jireh, because on that mountain, the Lord provided dead a sacrificial lamb. And Christian, we know that in our times, there are times that we, we face the same thing. Don't lose heart. Imagine just keep on praying, keep on believing. God never stopped listening to our, to our prayer. I remember the story of one man, he had a dream. And in his dream, he dreamed that uh, he dreamed that the Lord had brought him to heaven. And while he was in heaven, uh, he was introduced to Peter to, touring in the heavenly cities. And while he was touring by Peter, he saw that there was an post office there. No. So can I can I go to the post office? Sure, why not? So they went there. After going to the post office, they look at the packages. He said, I have a name here. How come that I didn't receive it? You know, Peter said, you know the reason why? It is supposedly to be on delivery, but at the time that are supposedly to be delivered, you stop asking, yes, you stop praying for it. So it is undelivered. You know, sometimes we stop believing and we stop praying that there was no delivery in prayer. That's the reason. So, in the lesson of Abraham, he never stopped believing. He confirmed the, 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 the servants that they will come back. Actually, Abraham knows that Isaac was a sacrifice. He confirmed Isaac when he was already uh, uh, tied to be, to be a sacrifice. Isaac was asking, everything is set and everything is ready, but where is the sacrifice? Then Abraham said, 
the Lord will provide. Don't lose heart. The God of comfort will continue to comfort us as we keep on believing. It is based upon the reality and response towards us. Don't lose hope because we believe He listened to us. Amen? He listened to us. Now, He is able. He, uh, he, he listens and understands our need. He never misleads us. Actually, He directs our path. So Christian, He is able to meet the need. God is willing to whatever needs we have. He opens His ear to listen and meet your need. What is our need? When salvation is needed, notice this, when salvation is needed, He responded by providing the only means. Christ is God's response to that need. Amen? Christ is God's response. In respect to whatever needs we have, a comfort was being received. He came on time to give it. The Bible says, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it is based upon reality and response toward us. Number last, it is based upon realization and reasons. In verse 2, we could find, of course, in paragraph B, the Messiah chapter 40, speaking comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her. Now notice here the promise of victory. The promise of victory. Her warfare is accomplished. Amen? Her warfare is accomplished. Meaning to say, like what happened to Abraham again. He passed the test. Her warfare is accomplished. The nation... Babylon had not even developed. The judgment of captivity hadn't taken place. But God is comforting them with the truth that the battle is over and the victory is being won. Tapos na yung laban. Tapos na yung gera. Wala na tayong pangalambaan. Are we not comforted if we overcome all our odds, all our problems, all our difficulties, all you see, the promise of victory, her warfare, is accomplished. You see, sabi niya rito, uh, that her warfare is accomplished. When we consider God's forgiveness, we need to realize that God has won the victory. Actually, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says, This is the victory that overcame the world. Even our faith. Kaya, yung faith natin talagang, it, it needed to be, kung baga sana madiligan. Amen? Of course, uh, ano ba yung dilig sa English? Water. It needed more water upang sa ganun, uh, so that the plants that we always put water will uh, sustain life and grow. Christian, this is the victory that overcame the world, even our pain. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing. Amen. As you keep on hearing the word of God, you get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. You will grow, 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 and grow in your pain. So, it is a matter of faith not a matter of performance. Amen? It is a matter of faith, not a matter of performance. No matter what you may be battling in your life right now, the victory is won. Our problem is that we refuse to acknowledge the victory and we keep on fighting the battles in the flesh. And because of that, because we battle, we keep on battling in the flesh, then we become defeated. And Christian, we must give it to God. Acknowledge our inability. But acknowledge His ability. Amen. And Christian, when it comes to uh, not only the promise of victory, but payment for sin, 
And the payment of sin is this is what God did to the nation Israel. Her iniquity has been removed. Amen? Sabi na nga ng Panginoon eh. God said, kaya nga, we do not believe in losing salvation eh. Right? We believe in eternal security. Once you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ and, uh, and uh, asked Him to be your Savior, it is permanent. I, I, I believe in that. Because the Bible says that no man can pluck them out of my hand. Amen? No man can pluck them out. Like when you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, you are now in the hand of God. When you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, He put yourself in His hand. And he clarifies it in John chapter 10, verse 30. And, sabi niya, the Father, no one, can, no one can pluck them out of my Father's hand. And then the Holy Spirit is the one who seals it. And, and that's the reason why we believe in eternal security. We are secure in the hands of God. How about if you sin? then you will be chastened. Amen? Child of God came. Hindi na. Even the devil has no authority, has no uh, power to take out what the Lord has already given to you. And we could find from the pages of the Word of God what the Bible says that if no one can pluck them out of my hand, then I am secure 100%. If I sin and keep on singing, then you have to examine yourself if you are truly, and if you are truly related to God. Now listen, God is satisfied with the removal. Amen? God is satisfied. Remember that in 1 John chapter 2, uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, says, And He is the propitiation for our sins. Uh, verse 1, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not, and if any man sin, we have, no, we have an advocate. Meaning, we have, a, we have a lawyer. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is our advocate. He is our defender. And then verse 2 says, And He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for us only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Christian, Christ's work on Calvary is the propitiation. Meaning to say, satisfactory payment for sin. However, propitiation does not equal application. Christ's blood cleanses us. Cleanse all sin, but all sinners are not cleansed. However, propitiation does not equal application. No, the blood must be applied. We must individually come to God on the basis of what Christ has done. There is no way that we can cause God to forgive us on the basis of anything we do. The comfort of God's forgiveness is based on our relationship with God. We could see here also punishment for sins. The Bible says, For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for her sin. Meaning to, meaning to say double, it, it's two parts, not twice. It's two parts, uh, not twice as much. Punishment. Of course, in punishment is what we deserve. And blessing is what we don't deserve. Christ, this is what Christ did. Christ bore our punishment and poured out grace and blessing upon our lives. Brethren, God has blessed us not only with salvation, but with so much more we have received double. John chapter 10, verse 10 says, Notice this, I am come that you might have life. Amen? Why? Because our standing before we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, we are dead, right? In trespasses and sins. He gave you life. You cannot do it in your own. Because if you are dead, 
How can you respond in your standing without God acting first in your life? Then God gives you life. And then He said, you want to have it more, abundantly. God, you can have another thing. Of course, that another thing is our continuous desire to develop more that relationship. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And Christian, as I conclude, do you know the comfort of God's forgiveness this afternoon? How is your relationship to Him? Are you living a life of victory or defeat? Are you ministering God's comfort to others? Christian, mga kapatid, sana maging comfort din kayo sa iba. Amen. Hoping and praying that you will become a comfort especially to those weak brethren. I pray that you will be a comfort to those sinners by telling them their standing and their condition. By winning them and bringing them at the foot of Christ. Because we know that in all your lifetime, you will do that. And you can do that. Because everything in this life has an end. And while we have an opportunity of doing the possibility of being a comfort, then brethren, let us do it. Because the forgiveness of God is the greatest comfort ever received by sinner. And the comfort of God is our comfort as we keep on fixing and focusing our eyes upon the Lord. May the Lord God bless your heart. And I am praying that the message you have received challenge your heart, challenge our heart. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I am so thankful for your word. I am so thankful for this message. And I am praying, Lord, that the message challenge the heart of your people. And we commit them unto you. Sadly that not all heard this message because we have some brethren that are not around. But I am praying for them that the God of comfort will reach them and be comforted. Maybe they could just listen it in our website for them to hear the comforting word of Jesus. As I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Father Joel, please come.